Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing, and welcome to part eight of our CMCNC Rostock Max version 3.2 build series. If you haven't been following along with the series, I strongly suggest you go back and check out the earlier episodes in the series, just so that you're caught up with where we're at in the build process. If you're not familiar with the CMCNC deltas, there's links below down in the description. Feel free to go check them out. They have a really great selection from tiny all the way to uber big. And with that, let's get going. Okay, when we had finished the last segment of the series, we deviated off the manual at step 24 over to build the carriages. Now we're gonna jump back in at step 24 and I'm gonna keep this camera view here so that you can see this. I actually had to move in a different table because the printer itself is so small, it was taller than my overhead camera. So I ended up getting one of the kitty tables out and we're gonna to try to keep it on here as view as much as possible. So the rest of step 24 is we're going to take these carriages and hopefully this is self-explanatory. The side with the, the dog bone and the end stop screw is going to go up. We're going to feed the wire through the carriage like this and we're gently going to roll that down and just let it slide down to the bottom. We're going to repeat that with the other two towers here. Now you don't want to force those onto here. You do want to be gentle as you put them on so that you don't damage the wheels. From here, we're going to go into step 25 and go from there as we start building the top assembly. So let me gather the rest of the pieces and I'll meet you back here in just a minute. Okay, so let's get started with step 25. Now for this next batch of things, I'm going to point out the items that we're going to need here and I don't have all of them in the frame of the camera just because there's too many going to need the top piece that has the fan cut out on it like so. Of course you're going to need the printer that you've built so far. You're going to need the three motor mounts, the three remaining frame pieces, and you're going to need the top hardware bundle as well as the top electronics bundle. And then eventually you're going to need the duet and the two duet pieces to braces there. So. I'm going to jump down a step just to get this done, but the first thing that I want to do is these pieces that are ejection molded, just like we did before, I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to trim off any of the flashing and then set them back aside. Okay, with those done, we get a little bit more room. Now we're going to set a couple of these other tools out of the way. And what we're going to do is start off with these motor mounts. You want to have your X, Y, Z facing up just like we did before. And we're going to take these motor mounts just like we did with the idlers down below. And we're going to push these in in this fashion. We're going to slide them on and I'm going to just do one at a time and try to get the screws started. Let's dump out a few screws here. We just don't want them to fall out. Put the next one on, start the two screws. Start the two screws here. And then at this point, all we need to do is tighten those down. I'm going to cheat and break out the big guns. Okay. 
And again, you don't want to tighten them all the way down with the power tool. If you go that route, you just want to finish them off by hand. And it looks like one of my T-nuts fell off here. So let's identify where that one goes. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, it looks like it was over here. So let's put that guy back in. Okay, now that we did that, the next step that we want to do is you should have these three guys, and it's hard to tell with the reflections here. Let's see if it'll focus. Those are your gears that are going to pull the belt. And we're going to put one of those on each of the three stepper motors. And those are going to take a very tiny hex wrench. Okay, so you need a two millimeter hex key. And you're going to slide these on one at a time. There's a flat spot on the stepper motor here, and you're gonna slide it on so one of those points hits the flat spot and it pushes all the way down so that the end is flush. And you're just going to tighten those up. Hit one set screw or grub screw, and then rotate it, hit the other one. You want these to be tight, you do not want them to slip, but you do not want to strip them either. So let me go ahead and put on the other two quick. Okay, now that's that's done, we can fit four nuts onto each of these, just like we did the other part, and then we're going to mount those on here, just like we did for the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed through that really quick in time lapse. Okay, we have that done. Now it looks like I did lose one of my screws here again, so let's see which one it was. And I guess I'm going to have to visually look, and it looks like it was this bottom one here. So let's go ahead and slide that back in. Okay, so we have that done. Our next step is going to be the duet mounts, and those are these guys. They look like this. We're going to go ahead and put in the larger ones. We're going to have to go ahead and put some nuts in those, the nylock nuts, the larger ones. Okay, these are going to go through these four inside holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put screws through two of them at a time. One, two. I'm gonna set one of these out of the way here for a second. And while trying to hold those, I'm going to flip this over so that you can see how these mount on. Of course, I just lost the nut. So those will go on here like this with the angled part pointing away. And those are going to try to rotate on you. So you're going to need to tighten them down as you put them in. These boards are what's going to hold your Duet processor in. And we'll repeat this for the other ones over here. And we have it like so. You do want to make sure that you don't do what I just did and pinch any of these wires. In this case, I got the end stop wire pinched underneath there. 
If you do, loosen it back up and make sure those are pulled out. Okay, those are free and clear. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is mount this fan. And the fan is going to use two M322 socket heads um, and two rubber rings and two nuts. Okay, so the way this is going to work, let me lift this up to show you. The bolt is going to come in from the bottom going up. You're going to put an O-ring around it, then the fan's going to sit on, and then the nut's going to fit on top. All right, so let's try to see if we can do that. We'll go through one at a time. Both one. Two. You're going to put the writing up, and you're going to put the blowing up toward the wall. And you're going to want to put the wiring towards the center of the printer. So let's slide that over. And then we're going to slide on these nuts just to get them started. Finger tight on the nylock. Now you can breathe. Okay, so these are going to be a hex nut as well. A little bit larger than what we had used before. But not that large. There we go. So these are going to be a 2.5 millimeter hex nut, and we're just going to use a set of pliers to hold the nut. And tighten those up. Now you don't want to over tighten them and kill that o-ring but the o-ring's there just to give it a little bit of vibration dampening I believe. So you just want to make sure that it's tight and that it's not going to vibrate. There you go. And we have our fan mounted. Now the next step is going to be installing the duet on here. So let's go ahead and pull that out of the box. Okay, so we have our duet board here. We're gonna dig all the way down to the bottom and pull out the anti-static bag that it is sealed in. Going to open it up. And it looks like we need a knife or a pair of scissors to do so as it is sealed. And there's no tear point. You do want to be careful about the Wi-Fi socket sticking out the side here and about these not to over twist any of them. They're soldered on good. Okay. And this is going to mount as per the pictures with the Wi-Fi card and the USB sockets going towards the outside of the printer. So it's going to sit just like that. So what we need are the M3 10 millimeter screws and M3 nylon knock, lock nuts, which should be in the Duet hardware bag. And it's also showing that we're going to use washers on there. So let's pull out, let's see what we have in this little bag here. Going to pull out our two nuts, uh, four nuts, three, four nuts, 
one, two, three, four M3 screws and four washers. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to set the rest of these aside for now. And we're going to go low. You might not be able to see me well on that upper camera. We're going to set this aside. We're going to put these nylock washers into the holes just like we did the large ones. Okay, once that's in, we'll take our board and fit that back down on top. Should have a clean path to all of the screws. If not, we may need to loosen it up like this one here is a little bit off, so we may need to push that over a little. Okay, we're going to take a washer and put it on each of these screws and then put one down in each corner. And again, you don't want to over tighten these. Wow, okay, that was a lot of work. Our last step for this particular piece of the series is we are now going to take this and fit it up on top just like we fitted the poles on the bottom except for harder. So we're going to pick it up and we're going to make sure that our X and our other areas are aligned with each other. So this is a Z towards me and so we're going to find our Z, X, Z and we're going to position it up here like so. Let's try to move this over so you can see it. And what we're going to do is pull those wires up through here just like we did for the bottom. And now, just like we did for the bottom, we're going to line up the T-nuts and slowly try to maneuver this thing down onto the rails. If all goes well, this should pull all the way down. Just like the bottom did. You can take your wires, pull them off to the side, drop them in the center. And once everybody is on all the way, We'll grab our appropriate sized heck wrench, which I set down and did not find here. There it is. Grab the appropriate sized hex wrench and tighten those up. And there we have it. The top section up to step 30 is done starting to look a lot more like a Delta printer at this point. And I think this is a good place to stop. Um, of course, I haven't gone back and edited this yet, but I have a feeling even with all these time lapses, it's still going to be a long one for you, so we'll call it here. In our next episode, we'll start putting the belts on and start looking at doing the electronics, and we'll go from there. So again, special thanks goes out to CME CNC for providing the Rostock Max version 3.2 for us to build for this series. And if you like what we're doing, please be sure to subscribe down below. Hit the thumbs up so you can get notified of the next video in the series. 
And if you are doing any online shopping, I do have affiliate links down there to both Amazon and MatterHackers. If you're shopping at either of those sites, I would appreciate if you don't mind using the link. It helps fund the channel and keeps things going here. And with that, I bid you aloha.